morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Hugh of Grenoble. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 817 in the hymnal, Lift High the Cross. That's number 817. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our Savior trod. Son of God, lift high the cross, Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, we rejoice to come together to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, the sacrifice of Jesus that he offers before the throne of his heavenly Father that now becomes present on our altar so that we may share in its benefits. Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, feeding us with his very self and strengthening us in the unity of our faith and the unity that has its basis in the spirit of love. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Today's reading starts on page 21, page 21 from the Misselet. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her. All you who love her, exalt, exalt with her. All you who were mourning over her, hope that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breast. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nursling, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the word has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make trouble for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. And to whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that, we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned, rejoicing, and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, 
Jesus. All right, Jesus. So um, summer is uh, uh, traditionally dedicated to uh, vacation time, uh, to leisure activities, uh, and, and rightly so. Uh, we all need uh, our rest. We do need to work, but we cannot work well, efficiently, productively, unless we also devote sufficient time to leisure. And leisure doesn't necessarily mean doing nothing, but it means resting the mind, resting the heart in activities that are very enjoyable. And of course, the Lord, he established one of seven days as a day of rest so that uh, we would have enough time and energy to rest in his love. Like the Virgin Mary, to meditate upon and reflect upon the presence of God in our lives, how he has blessed us and how he has brought us out of, out of darkness into his light. But the scriptures today, they don't speak so much about leisure as about work, the work that we, that the Lord gives us as his followers. But first I wanna look at the first reading as, as a kind of context for what we're doing here. The prophet Isaiah spoke the oracle of God that we heard in our first reading after the children of Israel had returned from their exile in Babylon to Jerusalem. And they found Jerusalem, of course, a ruin. The buildings and the walls had been destroyed by the Babylonians and most heartbreakingly, the temple had been destroyed. And so the exiles come back to Jerusalem, that, that privileged place where God chose to, in a special way, dwell and be accessible to his people in and through that temple and through the house of David, whose king lived in Jerusalem the king appointed by the Lord to, to reign justly and compassionately in the name of the Lord. So the, the Lord is speaking through Isaiah and saying to the people, rejoice now with Jerusalem, be glad because of her, Jerusalem of which you now are a part, you who love her, exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her because she was, she was ruined, she was destroyed. But now there's a new beginning that God's going to make possible. I don't know that we understand properly how much the children of Israel in the Old Testament loved Jerusalem. They loved those going to Jerusalem on pilgrimage for the great feasts of the Jewish liturgical calendar. They loved coming to the temple when they will, whenever they could because that was the place where God had chosen to dwell among his people to show his faithfulness, his trustworthiness, and to assure them that he would never abandon them, never abandon them. Now, in the New Covenant, we rejoice in the New Jerusalem, which is the church. And we are filled with joy when we are able to come to the house of God there to meet Jesus in the Eucharist. That privileged place where we meet our God, where he speaks to us through the Holy Scriptures, where his sacrificial love becomes present. 
in the holy sacrifice of the altar and where we partake of his very body and blood, soul, and divinity when we worthily come up for Holy Communion. It should truly indeed be the mark of the Christian people that we rejoice in the Eucharist, rejoice to come to church, rejoice to be with each other, to praise God and exercise our priestly ministry, to offer ourselves and the whole world as a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. And just as in the Old Covenant, the, uh, the children of Israel spoke of, of Jerusalem as being like a mother, Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. So in the new covenant, we speak of the church as Holy Mother Church, who not only carries us in her arms, but she fondles us, shows her, her loving kindness and affection for us, and comforts us. This is what Holy Mother Church is for us as Christians. And, of course, the, the true personification of Holy Mother Church is that mother. Because she is the church come to the fullness of the Christian calling. The life of charity. And then the prophet says, speaks the word of God, I will spread prosperity over this ruined Jerusalem like a river. Not just a little water, but a lot of water. And of course, Jesus speaks of the gift of the Holy Spirit as a, a fountain, a river of water within us, bubbling up to eternal life. And the wealth of the nation shall come like an overflowing torrent which can be understood on two levels. First of all, that the surrounding nations would bring their timber and their gold and uh, their, their stonework and their spices in order that Jerusalem and the temple could be rebuilt and God could be worshiped. For it was because, it was for the reason that, that God would form the children of Israel to be a priestly people whose, who, who, whose purpose is to sing the praises of God by, by receiving from him forgiveness and mercy and that love which alone can transform the human heart to choose always the good for oneself and for others. Just as the psalm says, he has changed the sea into dry land. When did he do that? The exodus from Egypt, right? The Red Sea. And through the river they passed on foot. What does that refer to, right? The children of Israel passing through the waters of the Jordan that separated as they came into the promised land after 40 years in the desert. Great signs of God's faithfulness, of his love for his people, that they might truly be free to serve him. Jesus says the one who would be free must become the friend of Jesus and the servant of Jesus. Now let's go to the gospel. The Lord, in the course of his ministry, and he's already, uh, he's already chosen 12 men whom he calls apostles. And he's given them authority over unclean spirits. He's giving, given them the power to, to heal the sick. The power that indeed comes from Jesus. But now... He's appointing 72 others. Although some of the, uh, Old Test uh, some of the New Testament uh, early manuscripts say he, he appointed 70 others. 
70 or 72 others. Why did he do that? And he gives them the, the, the power that he gave also to the apostles, although they're not apostles. There's 70 or 72 others. Well, go back to the book of Numbers in the, uh, the Old Covenant. That's the book where we learn how to do our mathematics. That's why they call it the book of Numbers. Well, not really. <laughs> it's because in the beginning of that book, all of the generations of Israel are listed. They're numbered as a sign that God does not forget his people. He remembers them. And salvation for us is when we come to the point where we don't forget God. We remember him and serve him with the grace he gives us. But Moses, of course, had been chosen as the leader of the people and uh, to lead them through the desert to the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the people of God, they're complaining. Now, can you imagine that? The people of God ever complaining? <laughs> they find the, uh, the journey through the desert uh, involves some hardship. And so some of them say, well, let's go back to Egypt. Yeah, we were slaves there, uh, but at least, uh, you know, we got three square meals every day. And uh, so Moses, he finds it difficult to deal with this constant complaining. And perhaps sometimes we've been in work situations where it seems our coworkers just constantly complain. Or maybe we've been involved in civic organizations where instead of there being a unity, there's just complaints, you know. And God help us, sometimes that complaining spirit can come into families, right? Spouses often just complain to each other, complain about their children, complain about their finances, complain, 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 without ever thinking of the Lord and how he's blessed them with faith. So Moses, he reached kind of the end of his tether, and he said to the Lord, Why do you treat your servant so badly? Why are you so displeased with me that you burden me with all this people? Was it I who conceived all this people, or was it I who gave them birth? Did you tell me to carry them at my breast, like a nurse carrying an infant to the land you have promised under oath to their fathers? Where can I get meat to give to all this people? For they're crying to me, give us meat for our food. I cannot carry all this people by myself, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you deal with me, then please do me the favor of killing me at once so that I need no longer face my distress. Have you ever felt that way sometimes, where the burdens of life are such that you just wish you just simply end your life? And isn't it remarkable that despite all the many um, comforts that uh, technology has, has given us, that more and more people uh, commit suicide, including young people. Apparently technology and the comfort it brings doesn't make us happy, not ultimately happy, not happy in the way we need to be. And then listen to how the Lord responds. Then the Lord said to Moses, Assemble for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders and authorities among the people, and bring them to the tent of meeting, where they are in place beside you. I will come down and speak with you there. I will also take some of the spirit that is on you, and I will confer it on them, that they may share the burden of the people with you. You will then not have to bear it by yourself. Now, Jesus very aware of that event that happened in the time of Moses. 
And so he appoints 70 or 72. to partake of his labor, to share his labor. Not because, in a sense, Jesus um, couldn't have handled it by himself. After all, he was the Son of God. But the Son of God took on our human nature, and human beings cannot accomplish what they need to accomplish alone. We need other people. A woman cannot produce children alone. She needs a man. <laughs> a man can't produce children alone. He needs a woman. You can't have a family unless you have a man and a woman. Two people. Remember the Lord sent them out two by two? Marriage is based on that. And Jesus says about the church where two or three are gathered, I'm, I'm in their midst. So we don't do it alone. But Jesus, he invites these 70 in addition to the 12. The 12 who are the forerunners of who? The bishops. And the 70 are the forerunners of whom? The 70 elders. What's the word for elder in Greek? Presbyteros. How's that get translated into English? Priest. I'm one of those 70. <laughs> and what do I do? I assist the bishop under the headship of the new Moses, Jesus. And it's Jesus that appointed me. I didn't, I didn't choose to be a priest. Jesus chose that I would be a priest, and, and I said, I'll, I'll go along with that. And then Jesus gives instruction to these, these 70 elders. He says, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Why didn't he say, I'm sending you out like giraffes among elephants? <laughs> because who's Jesus? He's the Lamb of God. He's the Passover Lamb of God who was slaughtered so that his blood may bring life and protection to his people. So we're going to be lambs, us priests, like the apostles. And by the way, all lay people who participate in the apostolic ministry, which is to be all of us in virtue of our baptism and confirmation, we're like lambs among wolves. In other words, we're going to give our life blood for Jesus for his church, Holy Mother Church, to build up the whole family of the human race so that we may attain to our, the reason why we're, we were created, that we might know the love of God, that that love would transform our hearts so that we could love God and others with the, the heart of Jesus. That's why I'm a Christian. That's why you're a Christian. That's why God chose us to be his own. And then the Lord gives some... Um, instructions, some of which seem to be very much attuned to that particular time period, but others which apply more generally. So priests and lay people who participate in the work, they're to travel kind of light. No money bag, no sack, no sandals. Greet no one along the way. In other words, don't get distracted. In other words, we live in the material world. Uh, we need food, we need clothing, we need a shelter. And we want to make sure that the way we form our, our country and our society is that everyone would have those goods. That no one would be deprived. But the Lord is saying, don't get so involved in them that you forget the reason why you're a Christian. To serve the kingdom, to serve Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus says, don't worry about these things. Don't be anxious about them. Follow me, and I will give you what you need. It takes a lot of faith to believe that, but that's the faith that Jesus requires if we're going to be fruitful. 
And he says, tell people the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Jesus is here. Jesus is working through his church, through the ministry of the word, through the ministry of the sacraments, through the ministry of charity. Jesus is here. Come and submit yourself to his rule, to his kingdom, and you will be free. Finally, you will be free to love God, to love others, and to love yourself in the right way. And Jesus says, even when you go into a town where they don't receive you, still say, peace be with you. May the Holy Spirit be with you. And if they will not respond with the appropriate response to the word of God, which is faith, then Jesus says, will shake even the dust from the town, saying, well, th th this kind of worldly way you're, you're thinking, trying to live your lives, it's not going to influence me. But look at this dust. That's all your life amounts to if you are separated from your creator, from the Lord of life. Because you will not be living life, you'll be living a, a, a living death that will end ultimately in an eternal death. But Jesus says, but tell them the kingdom of God's at hand. This is what the church does. This is why this is the Catholic church, the universal church, the all-embracing church. We do what Jesus did. We go to everybody and we tell them the kingdom of God is at hand, not only with our words, but as we live that new life of the kingdom, a life of charity. In the 72, they went out, they came back, and they were happy. They were happy because when they took what Jesus, the gifts, of faith that Jesus gave them and shared it with others, they found that the demons had to flee. The demons that want to prevent us from believing in Jesus with all of their lies, half lies. Oh, no, no, you, you, you don't want to live that way. They flee, and the people come to faith. They now become disciples, part of the church, part of Holy Mother Church. And Jesus said, I have observed Satan falling like lightning from the sky. When did Jesus observe that? Before the human race was even created. When Satan and the demons, the fallen angels, rebelled against God, they fell from heaven. Why? Because God kicked them out? No, no, God didn't kick them out. They left. They left of their own free will. Because they said to Jesus, they said to God, this is not freedom to serve you. Freedom is to do what I want when I want, and you can't tell me otherwise. Have you heard that kind of philosophy? <laughs> It's a very common philosophy in our secular world. That's the voice of Satan. And when a person adopts that kind of philosophy, it leads, they, 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 they leave the presence of God. Not that God kicks them out, but they leave. And then they bring with them a whole host of horrible evils. We know what those evils are. Jesus says, I've observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky, and in your ministry, by which I work through you and my spirit works through you, Satan flees, and you bring people to freedom. But don't rejoice because you find the spirit subject to you, because then you might get a little proud and think, oh, I've done this. Aren't I a wonderful person? I guess I'm better than other people because of this. No, Jesus says rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because 
God's love, his charity is working powerfully in you. Now let's finish with St. Paul. Second reading. Brothers and sisters, he says, may I boast, never boast, except in the cross of Jesus Christ. Because all of creation, all of redemption, all the, the good that I have, that people have, that creation has, flows from that. Flows from that. God's eternal love made accessible to us in the human love that Jesus has for us, so much so that he laid down his life for us. And Paul says, through that cross, the world has been crucified to me. In other words, the attractions of the world and of its way of, of living according to, you know, greed and anger and, and envy and lust and gluttony and that holds no attractions for me now. It's, it, 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 uh, I'm dead to it. And that's why we come to the cross of Jesus continually. That the world will die to us. I don't mean that other human beings will die to us. No, we have a, a, a ministry to them. But the way the world constructs itself, no, I'm not going to live that way. I see a better way to live. And then Paul says, I have been crucified to the world. In other words, the world looks at Paul as it would look like any Christian to say, you're of no use to me because you don't participate in my distorted half lies and distorted pleasures. You don't join me in debauchery, in carousing, in murder. You don't join me in these things. And that makes me angry because there still is a little bit of conscience in me and you prick my conscience and I don't like that. And how do we react to that? <laughs> the kingdom of God is at hand. God loves you. God will forgive you. God will enlighten you. God will lift the burden of your sins off of you. Believe in him. Give your life to him. And you will truly be free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. now and in gratitude to all those who have preached and shared the word of God with us such that we now have faith let us together profess that faith I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life for the world to come. Amen. Our eyes, by God's grace, are fixed on the Lord until he show us his mercy with confidence. We present to our Heavenly Father the needs of the church and of the whole world. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord, that the church will always more perfectly live in the truth of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. That the Lord will bless our nation as we celebrate Independence Day on the 4th and keep us always under his watchful care. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the advance of civil protections for all persons, for the first moment of conception to the last moment of natural death, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the poor and needy and all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For faithful marriages and an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, deaconate and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For an end to war and the great suffering it causes, and for those who work for peace and the just ordering of human affairs, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the sick among our family and friends, especially Julie Andrews, that the Lord will help them bear the illness in union with Jesus' obedient suffering. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all her beloved dead, especially Michael Russo, Miguel Gutierrez, Shandradat Ramsawak, and Albina Henyok, that the Lord will raise their mortal bodies to the perfection in company of all, all the saints. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. And for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord on this his day. Loving Father, make us faithful to the promptings of your Holy Spirit and bless us always with the peace and love the Spirit brings through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
may we be accepted by you, Lord, and we are sacrificing your sight in this day. Be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And this Mass is being offered for the intentions of the entire parish. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. 
And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hand, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in the saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Hugh of Grenoble, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven, in a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now, <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we give thanks to God always that we can gather together in person to support each other in the virtues of faith, hope, and love, to hear God's word, and to have holy communion with Jesus and with each other in him. The July share food selections are in this week's e-bulletin. Payments are due by Sunday, July 10th. And just as a quick reminder, this is a program that is available to all parishioners. It is a way of ordering very healthy foods at a discounted price. And given the way the inflation has hit the, the cost of food, this can help in the, the family budget. And also to let you know that there are a number of parishioners who, who make these selections for the sake of others, who give that food away to others. So, but just so, so that you're aware of that. Tomorrow, of course, is Independence Day, the 4th of July, a time when we thank the Lord for uh, the blessings that he has given to our nation, that we may always be grateful for them, and form a society of law, of, of due order and justice that uh, is in accord with his holy will. The daily mass will be at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and the parish offices will be closed. And I wish you, your family, and all your loved ones a very uh, happy, uh, joyful, and safe 4th of July. Two of the people uh, that we prayed for today for the deceased are members of our own parish staff. Miguel Gutierrez is the father of our bookkeeper, Maggie Gutierrez, and uh, Chandra Dot Ramsawak is the, the brother of the director of our School of, of Religion, Rohani Bacchus. So if you would keep them in your, your prayers. Now I invite you to pick up the prayer card that you will find in the pew racks and pray with me the prayer to St. Hugh of Grenoble to ask his intercession in this 75th year of the founding of our parish. Let's pray together. O oh God, who wonderfully numbered among your holy shepherds, the Bishop St. Hugh of Grenoble, a man burning with divine charity and outstanding for that faith which overcomes the world, grant through his intercession that we too persevering in faith and charity, may merit to be sharers of his glory. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria.
So God's justice never dies. Go be healing to God's people. of Christ, our only hope of salvation. Thank you all for your ministry today. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Carmen. Calvin, thank you. so enjoyed yesterday. Yeah, we'll do it again. Yes, we will. Oh, you as well. I love the children. That, that they're all nicely dressed for the He loves that. God bless you all. Have a beautiful 4th of July tomorrow, all right? Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Hey, Lauren. God bless you. Can they say, can happy 4th. Next fall, when you begin school,